This is an MJA Inc. Investigations Warning. This MJA podcast is rated E for explicit. Some details of a case and language used on this podcast might be upsetting to some of our listeners. Listener's discretion is advised. And for those who are still with us, kick back and enjoy the show. When there is an ending, there was a beginning. Every victim has a picture to paint. Every true crime has its time and place. Please join our MJ podcast, the series Deep Into the Woods, Missing Persons, Unsolved Crimes, and the Does. Welcome to our MJA podcast, the series In Memory Of. This is episode three, Missing Bonnie L. Schultz. My name is Mark, and I will be your host for this podcast. Joining me later will be our co-host, Olivia. We are coming to you from our home office in Hudson, Florida. Welcome to Indianapolis, Indiana. On July 3rd, 1997, 47-year-old Bonnie Schultz, a white female, went missing from Indianapolis, Indiana, located in Marion County. MJA started working on the case on July 3rd, 2001. Schultz was last seen leaving a pub, the Time Out Lounge, in the area of 62nd and Allison Road on the northeast side of Indianapolis, Indiana on July 3, 1997. She was driving a blue 1990 Mercury Sable four-door station wagon with Indiana 98 plates 99G. 9645. The vehicle has never been located. 
The night she disappeared, Bonnie had a conversation with her husband about marriage problems. After 26 years of marriage, Bonnie wanted a divorce. After their conversation at home, Bonnie left for a nighttime birthday party at the Time Out Lounge with co-workers from a part-time inventory job. It was reported that Bonnie was having an affair with a male co-worker who was at the party. Bonnie's boyfriend passed a polygraph where her husband Richard's results showed deception. Witnesses said Schultz was upset when she arrived, but that she settled down throughout the evening. Police monitored Schultz's bank accounts and cell phone activity, but nothing has been found. A missing person may be having an affair and asking for a divorce, a missing car, and after all these years, nothing has come to light to break the case wide open. The husband claims that when Bonnie didn't return home, he just thought she spent the night with a co-worker. I would think or lean towards that the husband is the leading suspect in the case. At one time, MJA was in contact with a family friend concerning the case, but after a couple of emails back and forth, nothing has happened in years. Let's take a pause for the cause. And when we return, Olivia will be on the line. Be back in a moment. This is an MJA update on the Bonnie Schultz case. Due to the geolocations, we have always felt the routes taken from work to the bar and to her home was along the White River and could be the key to finding some type of evidence. MJA has learned as of 2022 Underwater searches using sonar has been used in targeted areas. In the search, it was reported six cars were found in different areas of the White River, but none of these cars turned up to be Bonnie Schultz's station wagon. But not is lost. The group conducting the underwater searches say their search for Bonnie Schultz hasn't ended. In return, more waterways will be searched that haven't been touched yet, but there is access to the areas. That's the latest update. We will be back on the line with Olivia. Be back in a moment. Welcome back to our MJ podcast, this series, In Memory Of. This is Episode 3, Missing, Bonnie Lee Schultz. We have Olivia on the line. How are you doing tonight? Doing well. Okay, here we have a missing 47-year-old white female. It turned out that the co-workers Bonnie was meeting at the Time Out Lounge for the birthday party was a close friend and a male co-worker who people claim that Bonnie was having an affair with. Bonnie told her co-workers she had a big fight with her husband Richard because he refuses to give her a divorce. Olivia, why do you think Bonnie went to the birthday party after telling her husband she wanted a divorce? Well, obviously, if she's having an affair with this guy, to meet him. Um, but I have a question. Um, she was married 26 years to this guy. Were there any issues in the marriage? Or is this just that someone caught her eye and she wants to end the marriage because of this supposed affair? 
Okay, is there any more you can add to that? Yes, I'm divorced. My husband was cheating on me. I wasn't married, you know, quite that long, and um, I wasn't long married for long at all. Um, you get signs when someone is cheating on you. Um, mine was a short-term marriage. It was only for seven years, and, uh, you know, you get signs that something's not right, you know, eventually... You can't hide an affair. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, just 26 years is a long time. And to end a marriage, it just uh, raises a lot of red flags, whether there was abuse within the marriage or um, it was just because of this boyfriend. And would that say to you that Bonnie had put some thought into getting a divorce and she went to the party because it didn't affect her? Yes. Yeah, um, the whole thing is kind of confusing to me. Um, you know, I, once again, I'm going to just question um, what the relationship was like with her husband and what prompted this divorce after 26 years. I mean, I know people get tired of getting marriage, married, but uh, 26 years is a long time to just call it quits. And do you think Bonnie's husband knew where she was going that night and followed her? Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, you get a sense when you're with someone, especially that long, you know, <clears throat> the pattern changes. Um, there's signs when people are getting, having an affair, you know, um, somebody that was always there. They're going to these parties or they're not coming home, they're time that they used to come home. Usually you're on a schedule. You know you know what each other does. You come home at a certain time. You cook dinner, this and that. or And then if there's like a question, like with my husband, you know, it was fine. And then he just started, well, I have to work late and this and that. And um, he's coming home at 2 in the morning. Um, I know your office, he worked in finance. Your office closes at 4. So you're not working until 2 in the morning, so... Okay. Just, um, I'm sure her husband knew something was up. And could it have been that Bonnie was upset because she saw her husband at the timeout lounge? Is it a known fact that he was there? Oh, um, no, I'm just saying he might have happened to walk in. She might have catched a glimpse of him or... It could be, you know, maybe if she saw him, yeah, that would upset her because it ruined her night because she was going to meet this supposed boyfriend or whatever you want to call him. Okay. And, and could it be that she calmed down because the husband left the bar without causing a scene? Just let me think about that for a second. Um I don't know why he would cause a scene. You know, if you're suspicious of something, of someone, um, especially your spouse, the last thing you want to do is cause a scene. You know, you want to go undetected. So uh, maybe she did calm down because she thought her husband didn't see her. Okay. She may have saw him, and maybe she, because there was, he didn't approach her or anything, she was thought that he didn't see her there. Okay. But you always get caught. Okay, we have Bonnie's car still missing. Where do you think the station wagon will be located? They didn't find it at the bar? No. No. It's nowhere to be found. Right, it's been missing as long as she has. Um, I would say... Um, I have no idea where the car would be. <laughs> Apparently, she's probably still in the car. It could and, be in water somewhere, you know? Okay. And do you think the cause of Bonnie's disappearance is because her husband discovered the affair? It's probably a big possibility, yeah. But uh, once again, I don't know if there were problems in the marriage, you know? I mean, for a husband to 
kill someone over an affair, I know it happens. Yeah, but is it really worth it? I'm starting to think um, there was a third party involved that caused her disappearance. After I had contact with a family friend of Bonnie's and then nothing for years, do you think this person might have given up trying to get Bonnie justice? Possibly. You know, um, given the situation, you know, some family members, um, you know, I... I come from old school Italians. They don't they don't believe in that that affairs. You know, I mean, if they knew I was having an affair on my husband, which I didn't. Um they wouldn't be too happy with me, you know, um some people some family members, you know, like my sister, she and I haven't spoken in years, you know. You distance yourselves for each other for different reasons, but uh, sometimes family just gives up. Who knows what this woman did before? This may have not been the first time that this has happened. And, you know, people just get to a point where they think, and they shouldn't, that you got what you deserved, you know? You should have stayed with your husband. In your eyes, do you think that this should be an open and shut case? No, um, she is missing. You know, she has the right to be buried, regardless of what her family thinks. You know, um, I'm sure there are family members that would like to know what happened to her and have her buried properly, but I don't think it should be a shut case, no. And okay, to you, which is more possible? The husband is involved or this was a random act? I don't think the husband killed her. I think maybe he... She ran into the wrong person in that bar. The husband, I just don't feel that the husband killed her or had anything to do with this. Um, I may be wrong, but, um, you know, as a married woman, you shouldn't be doing that stuff. That's just my belief, you know. Um, that's how I was raised. I was raised Catholic. You don't do that stuff. You know, um, there's circumstances with that. But um, you don't know what this um, male person that she met was, you know, up to. You know, you don't know what type of person he was either. Or, like I said, the husband maybe um, had her disappear or had her killed. I don't know. Okay, would it, would it help you that the so-called boyfriend passed the polygraph and the husband's polygraph results showed deception? Does that help change your mind in any way? I'm still on the fence, i got to be honest with you. You know, uh, polygraphs, how um, good are they, really? I mean, you could be nervous and take a polygraph test and uh, fail it. Am I correct? Yeah, you could, yes, yes. Um, you could also be a good liar and pass it. Okay. So I, um, I'm on the fence with the polygraph tests. I really, um, don't know because, um, they could, his, her husband could go back and take another one and it would come out differently, you know, um, that's just my opinion. I may be totally wrong about this whole thing. You would know better. Okay, we have searched several areas where the station wagon could be, and nothing's been found yet. MJA has searched several wooded state parks in the area, looking for the remains of Bonnie Schultz, and we plan on carrying out more searches in 2022. Olivia, do you think it's possible, if the vehicle is located, that Bonnie's remains is inside the station wagon? More than likely, yes. And Olivia, please tell us what you think happened to Bonnie Schultz. I think it was a random killer. I think someone else killed her besides her husband and this guy she was supposed to meet. Or it could have been the guy she was supposed to meet. Um, like you said, the husband's polygraph test was not good, but... Um, 
Maybe he was thinking of having something done with her. I don't know. Um, I just think it's a strange case. You know, I'm not too crazy about marital affairs it's for obvious reasons. You know, um, I don't think it should be done. You want to get out of a marriage, get out of the marriage. Don't, you know, don't do stuff like that because it turns out bad sometimes. And like I said, you don't know who she met in that bar. It may have been somebody else that and, killed her. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, I think I kind of summed it up mm. in this uh, podcast. But, uh, you know, I hope you find her and you find out what happened to her. Um, is the husband still alive? Uh, the last time we knew he was still alive, yes. And he hasn't been brought in for questioning? Oh, he yeah, he's been questioned more than once. And what? It, well, like they say, there's no evidence to prosecute. You know. Right, right. You know. It's just, I, you know, it's a curious case, and um, it's quite interesting. And I'm interested to see um, if you find any leads about this. Okay, Bonnie Schultz had two children, a lovely family and friends, who are still waiting for justice to be served. This has been in memory of missing Bonnie Schultz. I have a quote for you all. A whole stack of memories never equal one little hope. Charles M. Schultz. I want to thank Olivia for being on the show tonight. A special thanks to our viewers and listeners for tuning in, for y'all have been so kind. Always remember, folks, if you ever get bored with nothing to do, well, take a walk deep into the woods. You might be surprised at what you might find. That's the end of our MJ podcast. And we say to all of you, good night from Hudson, Florida. <laughs>